I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart, and I'll enter his courts with praise. I will sing, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. And so on that note, I welcome you to this episode of the Summons, A Call to Discipleship. And today, we are focusing on the sacrifice of praise. Know this, that this production is brought to you with a kind of sponsorship of Unique Productions, and you can follow us on YouTube, on the channel, Laudina the Soprano, as well as all social media platforms. We want to go straight into today's ministrations, as well as the word that is going to be brought to us. Of course, starting off with the first set of ministrations, and it's going to be brought to you by Laudina the Soprano and friends. Starting off with the first song, Metunium, by Pastor Kinsley Mensa.
Thank you very much, Lordina the Soprano and your friends for bringing us that beautiful rendition. Um, we want to go straight into the word, but be reminded that this particular production is brought to you by Unique Productions and you can follow us on YouTube on the channel Lordina the Soprano. For today's word, it's going to be brought to us by one who is a lawyer, an energy consultant, an entrepreneur, as well as an elder of the Church of Pentecost. He loves to be known as Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, we wait for your word. Hello. I believe you are in good health, just as I'm also in good health. Today we are talking about the sacrifice of praise. And we are hoping that after our short discussion, following with the relevant songs that are selected to demonstrate our praise to God, your heart will be blessed your mind will be realigned and your spirits will be ignited to give unfettered praise to the creator of the world. Our topic we're discussing this morning is sacrifice of praise. What is a sacrifice? For those of us who are Christians and believers in Christ Jesus, when we read the scriptures, we are confronted with many incidents of sacrifices of animals in the Old Testament. 
But when we come into the New Testament, we have a different rendition of sacrifice, which does not involve the shedding of the blood of animals. A sacrifice, what it is. We can simply say that it's the act of giving up something that is of value to you with the expectation that it brings benefit to another person or in relation to God. It gives an expression of how well you appreciate God's kindness to you. A sacrifice of praise, therefore, would be the offering to God, the praise that you would normally receive and give to yourself in relation to what you have achieved in life. So when I think of sacrifice of praise, personally, I, I love a song that was sung by a renowned musician in the Christian circles, one Andrew Crouch, the late Andrew Crouch, to God be the glory. And there's a stanza in there that says, he says, let me just live my life. And let, if there be any praise, let it go to Calvary. If there be any praise that comes from the beauty of my life, let it go to Calvary. When you read the scriptures and you look at a scripture like Psalm 100 from the verse 4, it says that enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why would we want to give thanks to God and praise his name? Thanksgiving, just as praise is, is not something that is offered in a vacuum. It is offered in recognition of some good that has been done us. And so when we are called upon, as David did in Psalm 104, as we just mentioned, to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, there is a call to recognize what God has done. And as we enter the place of worship, as we enter the gathering of the saints in his time, when, we, when they enter the gathering of the people of Israel, there was a call for everybody to recognize what God has done. Indeed, it is very possible that a person may live his life and not realize what God has done for him. But when you look at scripture, and I like to usually look at the scripture in like uh, Psalm 19, reading from the verse 1, it speaks about the glorious splendor of God's majesty and how wonderful he intervenes and works things out, both in the things that he has created and in his workings in our lives. He says that these wonderful things of creation, the the stars, the skies, and the wonderful items we find in creation, they don't have a voice, but they carry a message that goes throughout. And the message is that God is wonderful. God is good. God is ginormous. And so if these things are given praise continually to God, we as children of God can identify with the many instances of God's interventions in our lives. The question is, if I have been able to achieve something for myself, would I say that it's only because of my own efforts? The scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and from verse 11 down, he says that it is not always that the journey or the race is won by the swiftest, not always that the brave or the strongest win the battle. It is not always that the educated live a peaceful or successful life. But there is something called time and chance that happened to all of them. In this case, we would say that we can identify with the hand of God that produces the opportunities that creates the opportunity for us to receive some praise. So a fantastic singer of song has been gifted with a beautiful voice. A person with a very high level of IQ that makes him capable of achieving great laurels in life, has received a gift of intellect from God. A person who is talented in sports has been naturally gifted by these things. If we even move into the spiritual gift as has been given to us by Christ as he ascended into heaven, the gifts of tongue speaking as some would believe in, as I do, the gift of healings, the gifts of words of wisdom and all the wonderful ministry gifts that God gives. They are gifts that he gives by his own volition. And so if there is any praise that comes from the exercise of these things, then we are calling on ourselves to give thanks to God. We offer these as a praise offering to God. 
It is something we could have kept for ourselves. Yes, because it is men who recognize the wonderful things we have done and be excited about them and shower praises on us. But then, as children of God, we want to remind ourselves. I want to read a scripture in Hebrews 13. Reading from the verse 14, I probably read the 14 and 15. And it says this, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. This is what I would say is the call that enables us to produce, if you like, unfettered and continual praise to God. We would definitely, through the efforts we exercise, be able to receive some accolades from our peers, from our churches, from our families, from our friends, in business. Name it. Because of the exercise of goodwill, the exercise of hard work, and that which we obtain from it, there will be accolades. But then we can recognize, and we must recognize, that the efforts that we put in were crowned by the grace of God. The mistakes we even make were affected by God's mercies. That it did not lead to disaster, but it has brought us some accolades. So then again, I'll restate what Andrew Crouch said. Let me just live my life. And if there be any praise that comes out of it, let that praise go to Calvary. Because I do identify that yes, it is God who has made it possible. David's psalm that he wrote in Psalm 23, he says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy, by their own volition, without my involvement, they follow me. And so if mercy crowns my effort, that a mistake that should have brought me some problem does not overtake me. And goodness crowns my effort that the good things I do yield great results. Oh, let that praise go to Calvary. But my brother and my sister, I want to encourage you that hard work is relevant to our existence on earth. And by God's own mercies, hard work produces some level of praise across the broad spectrums of the spheres of our lives. But be mindful that the praise must go to the one that is due, for it is he who has made it possible for us to do and achieve the accolades. So I would say, our sacrifice of praise must be continual. Yes, it must be continual. I want to read another scripture, maybe as I bring this to a close, from Psalm 59, and I want you to read from the verse 16 and verse 17. It says this, again from the New Living Translation. But as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. For you have been my refuge, a place of safety when I am in distress. Oh, my strength, to you I sing praises. For you, O oh God, are my refuge, the God who knows me, who shows me unfailing love. So my brother and my sister, as you hear us speak about sacrifice of praise, be reminded on the authority of scripture that God intervenes in our lives in various ways. His intervention brings us provision. His intervention brings us guidance. His intervention brings us protection and all these produce opportunities for people to praise us. But when these praises come, let us redirect them to the place that it is due. Let your sacrifice of praise be continual. God bless you. Thank you so much, Uncle Joe, for that message, which is all inspiring. Indeed, it is time for us 
to dance and move our bodies to the good tunes that come from the Word of God. And it's going to be brought to us by Lordina the Soprano and her friends. So if you're ready, I want you to get out of your couch or whichever place you find yourself right now. Grab your handkerchief and get ready for some dancing. Yes, they are going to be bringing us a medley of danceable tunes. And they begin with a song by Amos Tete titled Wosun. Oh, 
It's been such an exciting episode of dancing to various tunes. Yes, I had a great time twisting and turning over here. I hope you had such time too, wherever you find yourself watching this right now. And we're excited to have brought you this particular episode of The Summons, The Call to Discipleship. Until next time, when we meet again here on The Summons, I want you to reflect on this question. What is your sacrifice of praise? Oh, my God.